Yeah, we back. Like we never left. Back on the block. Hey. Yeah. Come on in, real ones. Turn us up in your headphones. The block loves us. Thank you all for tuning in around the world. You know what time it is. I am Cameron A. Sharp. And I am Cena. And welcome back to another episode of On the the Block. Block. Yes, indeed. So what's going on, everybody? We hope that y'all took our week one picks and won some money. Definitely definitely. didn't send us any. (laughs) We love money. Money. But week week one of the NFL was exciting. Uh, a lot of people saw some things coming, and other things were extremely out of this world. Some performances that I expected. If y'all used the team name, all I do is win stun, then you saw what I was talking about. My boy Jameis did not throw for 5,000 yards, but he threw for five touchdowns. So, you know, it went down this past Sunday. No, it did. It did. Jameis looked real good. Real good. You know, extremely good. And their yeah. opponent did not. Mm, man. It was a lot of different things that went wopsided. But for the most part, our picks, they stood true. <laughs> I'm proud of us, man. For our first go at it, we actually stood true to the to the game. Yeah, we ain't do too bad. I was proud of us. You're right. We ain't yeah, do too, man, too bad. Yeah, man, but... Yeah, but how about we go ahead and just recap week one for the people. Uh, I know they tuned in. We saw y'all tuning in around the world. What up, Germany? What up, Vancouver? Georgia? Indiana? Louisiana? Shout out to North Carolina. I see y'all out there listening to us. We appreciate y'all for tuning in around the world, especially America. You know we are Houston's favorite podcast and Texas' only podcast that keeps it completely unbiased with y'all. We are the Unbiased Truth, and On the Block is a part of the Unbiased Network. Sino. Yes, sir. Let's give these people this week one recap. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, the weeks started on Thursday with the Cowboys and the Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. Buccaneers 31. Yes, sir. Cowboys 29. Bucks went ahead and took that home. Did you see that coming? Or did you were you expecting your boys to pull that one off? Uh, you know, I wanted my boys to pull it off, but... Um, you know, you can't always get what you want, you know. So, uh, I, I, I but I, I thought they played extremely well. I'll give them that. I thought they played extremely well. I liked it. Absolutely. Against the, the, the contending champs, I won't count out the Cowboys on their season opener, but we didn't even have picks for those. So, I mean, hey, so we didn't lose. It is what it is. Mm-mm, we didn't lose it all. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> so the next game that we had on Sunday, or well, one of the games we had on Sunday, was the Eagles versus the Falcons, the the, the Battle of the Birds. And mm, uh, the, the Eagles Dirty came out. Yeah, facts. The Eagles came out 32, Atlanta 6. Jalen Hurts looked extremely good. So did Devontae Smith, Heisman Trophy winner. Well, both of them are Heisman Trophy winners. Yep, they have been striking that pose, that famous pose. <laughs> now it looked extremely good. You know what? We actually look extremely good on that pick too. Both of us picked the Eagles to stomp the Falcons. And coming in the next week, I don't know if they're going to get another dub, but we'll talk about that <laughs> in a bit. Right, right, right. The next game we had was the Steelers versus the Bills. Steelers came through 23-16. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl. I'm telling you, boy. Here we, I told you. I told you. We always got a chance. We always got a chance. I know I picked the Bills. We both actually picked the Bills on that one. Right, but right. I never count my Steelers out. They always got a chance. They look sloppy as hell in that first half, though. I'll admit that Mike Tomlin got into that locker room and told Najee Harris, hey, Knock it off, rookie. <laughs> right. And he still looked frustrated after the game, but you just got to deal with the first the first week blues. That's what it came down to. And we definitely gave the Bills the blues. Y'all did. Y'all time. did. Y'all looked extremely good, man. I, I was I was, I was proud of the, the Steelers. You know, I got Najee Harris, so I, I was proud. He didn't perform the way I would want him to, but uh, it looks promising. We'll, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll say that. We'll say that. Yeah, we took a major L on that pick. 
Oh, Char. No, 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 no. He's going to come through. He's on my team, so he got to come through. Next game we had <laughs> was uh, the Vikings and the Bengals. Bengals went ahead and took that one in overtime, 27-24. to 24. Oh, man, we had a split one on this one. I picked the Vikings to take it out because I thought that maybe Adam Thielen, I was hooked on a Thielen, but he let me down because the Bengals, I thought they said Jamar Chase wasn't catching nothing, you know? That's what they said. What that happened, man was man? dropping everything in preseason. I mean, I think he had, what, like three receptions, but uh, it was 101 yards and a touchdown. So, hey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, bro, you, you knew what you was doing with that one. I just like, you know, Joe Burrow, he, he looked good, you know. Uh, the, the Bengals overall, they looked good, you know. And, and yeah, so did man. the Minnesota Vikings that my brother loved. They just didn't have enough to uh, pull it out. The, bingo, the Bengals were Burrow and titties. Like, they were just in and out of them titties yeah. constantly. Proud of them boys. And another game we had was the 49ers versus the Lions. 49ers took that one 41 to. 33 Jared Goff threw mm. actually Jared Goff was the, the passing leader with 338 yards but uh Elijah Mitchell you know came in after Monster got hurt and uh put up 104 and then Debo Samuel I was going against Debo Samuel Debo Samuel put up 189 <laughs> yards in a touchdown and he was in the flex he put up like 20 some points that was I lost so I, I lost one game this week <laughs> Debo was one of the top problems this week. If you had him on your team, you were enjoying. But if you had to play against him, oh, man, it was a problem. <laughs> oh, most definitely. But, yeah, we both picked the 49ers to take that win. I believe in the 49ers. Start Trey Lance, <laughs> please. <laughs> Either way it goes, they pulled out the win. Most definitely. His time is coming. His time is coming. But uh, I believe it. Oh, most definitely. Cardinals versus the Tennessee Titans. Cardinals ran away with that one, thirty-eight, thirteen. Um, I mean, their 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 offense looked good. Kyler looked good. Hopkins looked like hot, but Chandler Jones on defense. That was, I think, Arizona. If Arizona wasn't picked up in your league, they're probably picked up now after the waivers or once waivers go through. Um, I'm pretty sure the people are looking at at the Cardinals. I think Chandler Jones had like five sacks. Why didn't I pick him for early or way, way, way too early defensive player of the year? I wasn't even thinking about Chandler. I did mention that this defense would be a problem, though. I think the fact that J.J. Watts on the other side is scaring a lot of people. You still got to respect that man. Oh, 100%. (laughs) Most definitely. Most definitely got to respect that man. That's a grown man over there, man. (laughs) Yeah, but at the end of the day, we both picked Julio, Derrick Henry, and Tannehill to pull the dub out. And they didn't. They let us down. Nah, man. Yeah. <laughs> to let the season open up. Yeah, they couldn't give Tannehill any, you know, any any time in the pocket. And you know, Derrick Henry didn't have too many, too much running room. So that was that. That's Tennessee's offense right there. Yeah, I'm never gonna give up on him. But Kyler Murray just he looked like. It looked like what he was supposed to be before that injury last year. I'm proud of him for getting back into rhythm and showing us what you can do with Cliff Kingsbury's offense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It looked great. Then we have the Seahawks versus the Colts. Seahawks took that one 28-16. Russell Wilson doing what Russell Wilson does. Tyler Lockett caught two TDs, I want to say. The Seahawks looked extremely good. Tyler Lockett, I told y'all, Tyler Lockett's a problem, especially with DK Metcalf there to help cover up whatever other problem he had. Tyler Lockett always flourished when there was another guy that was a big catch player, like Baldwin, for example. Right. See what Dang, I'm saying? Crazy. Like a like, a, you know, you gotta think about it like that. Tyler Lockett's been around for quite some time. Their chemistry is not off. So anytime Russ needs to throw it up, it's kind of like how Patrick Mahomes is with Tyreek Hill. Fuck it, Lock is down there somewhere. <laughs> Just don't chunk that all up. Right, <laughs> and no there you have it, two TDs, you know. <laughs> and on that one, man, on that one, I got to say, man, we won. We won on that one. Both of us chose the Seahawks. So, hey, give it up to them on that. I think Russ is ready to take that MVP. I think so, too. He, look, he looked extremely good. You know, the offense looked good. I mean, we didn't mention Chris Carson, but Chris Carson is always a solid running back. You know what I'm saying? RB2, mm-hmm. RB1, you know, depending on the mm-hmm. week. And, uh, no, the, the Seahawks looked extremely good, man. I liked it. Yeah. Anytime the Seahawks are successful through the air, you know it's because of Chris Carson's ability to keep that defense on their toes when he's got that run game clicking. So, hey, you got to give it up to the Seahawks for running that complete Pete Carroll offense. Right, right. Most definitely. Most definitely. 
Uh, we also had the Chargers versus the Washington football team. And that mm-hmm. ended up with the Chargers up 20 versus 16. <laughs> and, you know, I have Justin Herbert, so I was, I, was, I was extremely happy about him, you know, winning and getting me some fantasy. He actually had a pass that went out the, the end zone that they called a touchback on that I just mm-hmm. knew was a uh, incomplete pass, but they, they said it was a fumble, went out the back of the end zone, touchback, gave the ball to um, the Washington football team. I was a little upset about that because Justin Herbert looks like he was about to run and or throw a touchdown, and I needed all of those points. Because that's the game, I, the week I lost, or the team I lost. So it's okay though. Yo, Justin definitely looked like he was ready to have a supreme season. He picked up right where he left off from last year. Proud of that dude for really getting into the groove of things. And on top of that, both of us picked the Chargers to take that win. So uh, hey, thanks for keeping us honest on these picks. <laughs> right, right, right. Most definitely, we knew we were on on that one. Mm-hmm. Next game, we have the Jets and the Panthers. Carolina came out on top, 19 versus 14. Sam Darnold looked pretty good, actually, for 279. Christian McCaffrey ran for 98. Corey Davis actually surprised me. He popped up with, like, two receiving touchdowns. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, Robbie Anderson, though. What I'm saying, I'm telling you, boy. Man, hey, them boys. Call out Robbie Anderson. <laughs> Them boy, he's going to flourish in that offense this year. So don't don't sleep on that young man. They they like to see him in that slide, and I think that slot position is one of their favorite positions to get the ball to. No, nah, most definitely. Got to look out for that man. Most definitely. I, but also they they're also one of our favorite teams right now because they gave us the dub this week too. Both of us picked right, <laughs> no, yeah, the Panthers, and you you don't bet against C Mac opening week, especially with them coming off injury. He got something to prove. Yeah, and we didn't know what what Zach Wilson was gonna do. I mean, Zach Wilson looked extremely good as well, but uh, we 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 didn't know what to expect. So good yeah. Job. <laughs> but <laughs> coming up, we have the Jaguars and the Houston Texans. And Houston won 37-21. to 21. Mark Ingram did pretty good. You called out Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks had 132 receiving yards. Mm-hmm. With Tyrod mm-hmm. Taylor at the helm of things. I knew Tyrod could throw a deep ball. I mean, Cooks can outrun everybody. You just need somebody that can give him the ball. Yo, Tyrod went on a tirade. And showed y'all exactly why he deserves to be QB one. It was amazing. The, the the energy's electric in Houston right now. They believe. They believe. They went out today. You see more Tyrod jerseys than you ever seen before in your life. It's they out here, boy. I'm like, hold up. I ain't no brother was out on the shelves like that. Y'all supposed to be six feet. What y'all doing? Like it's, it's it's an interesting time to be alive in Houston, man. Because because everybody needs something to believe in, and it seems like sports teams are people's backbone and heartbeat as well because people are really striving on their sports teams to do well to boost their morale this this holiday season and from what i can tell the houston texans are serious about making sure that they at least go eight and eight and i'm glad to see that they put up the the dub but uh we actually took a l yes. on that because we thought that uh the jags were gonna come in there because i thought trevor lawrence was gonna continue the streak Man. and never lose a regular season game but uh trevor had to take that l and it's okay sunshine you'll get him back next time yeah, no, nah, I agree. I mean, he didn't look too bad. He actually threw some late game TDs. You know, he, uh, he's a rookie. It's gonna take some time. Mm-hmm. You know, he still put up twenty eight points for my team, so I, uh, I appreciate it. I didn't start him. I started uh, Justin Herbert. You actually asked me about that. Hey, you think you want to? I didn't uh, start Trevor either. <laughs> you're like, hey, you think you want to put somebody else in since uh, Herb is going against Washington? Nah, let him do it. Should have put in Herbert. I mean, I should have put in Lawrence, man. Sunshine, man. I got you next time, man. Mm-hmm. Well, not yeah, this week. I had. Next time. <laughs> I had Sunshine on the bench this week because I had that boy Patty Ice repping for me, man. But we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> Actually, you're right on cue because the next game I have here is the Browns versus the Chiefs. And the Chiefs came on through with that 33-29. to 29. Mahomes, 337 yards. Yikes. Tyreek Hill, 197 get... receiving yards. Crazy. It can get frightening out there, man, when those boys get to connecting like that. It's not even about playing football at that point. It's about not getting embarrassed. Really? You can, I got kids. I got kids, man. You better chill out with all of this, man. Got out Come of on. Hand a little quick. Uh, in the beginning, huh? Baker was on a tear. And then uh, I also heard, I, I didn't watch as much of this one, but I, I was I was watching it here and there. But I heard, you know, they stopped feeding Nick Chubb the ball. I see he only had uh, 83 rushing yards, but I know 
Chubb was getting it in in the first half, and I heard they they kind of stopped feeding him. Well, you know they had Crispy Kareem coming up, man. They got to ah. incorporate him in the offense this this year, man. I told you, everybody's waiting on Crispy Kareem to go off, and he actually had a pretty decent game. Yeah, but if Chubb is still psh, churning it on out, go ahead and get that ball to Chubb. But I, I, like you said, Crispy Kareem against his old team wanted some some you know some revenge, you know. Yeah, something. that's what it was. Yep, you know that's what it was. But Patty Patty Mahomes definitely got the best of that one. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, Patrick, man, that that guy right there, he he he's he's a miracle to anybody's team. It's amazing that I have come across somebody from East Texas as amazing as him for my roster. It, it feels good to see my hometown, home, my you know my you know my home state homeboy getting in there and repping, man. I had I had him and Tyreek on my team. As soon as I saw that they were playing, I didn't even have to open up my app anymore. I just watched the notifications come up and just really smile, dope. man. Just, man, it was just, oh, happy day. Like, oh, man. I was, but, hey, still still wait a little bit, y'all. They're still filling out the offense. That's the beauty of Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. Pat was just going with somebody he was more familiar with. Wait until he gets Miko Hardman into the bunch a little bit. Wait until Travis Kelsey goes off because he did not have a bad game. This is, we're seeing some amazing things from them. Right. Kelsey had a couple of touchdowns. Mm hmm. That's true. Always beautiful. The next game we have. Oh, and we both we both pick, I think, the Chiefs for that one. I mean, that's kind of. Yeah, I, reality, I feel like I feel like it went without question, but we definitely went with the Chiefs. On that. Uh, if y'all were if y'all were waiting on yeah, we definitely rode with the Chiefs. <laughs> on that one. That, that's just a ride with Pat ride with Pat. Um, mm -hmm. The next game I have here is the Dolphins versus the Patriots. Dolphins actually beat them by one point, 17-16. Mac Jones, 281 Ooh. yards. I told you, an uh, Alabama product is always welcomed on my team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true, man. You did you did shout out the Alabama crew. You said Nick Saban putting some in the water or something like that. You, you definitely water, said. Bro. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's putting in the water, but there's definitely something he's putting in that water. And uh, that ain't salt Gatorade. <laughs> it's not. Some with their weight program too, because them boys be big. You know, <laughs> big. They yeah. Oh yeah. They healthy. And uh, hey, they be NFL strong already in college. I'm like, man. <laughs> them boys is, is healthy. And Mac Jones did not look bad. I see him being more of a field general this year for Belichick until he's able to create within that offense. But guess what? You got to stay on a very tight lead, Mac. Or guess oh, what? Man. You gonna see yourself out like Garoppolo. 100%. They looking, man. They lurking. They looking and lurking. I think Belichick's gonna do what he can for them this year, but uh, unfortunately, we took that L, bro. We took that L big time, man. Cause um, yeah, Tua came through. Dolphins pulled it out, man. Dolphins pulled it out. Yeah, Tua came through. He didn't look bad. Devontae Parker had some receptions. You know, he didn't look bad mm -hmm. at all. You know, like they they the Dolphins had some. Jalen Waddle, Jalen Waddle mm -hmm. had a nice little game. So as a rookie, yeah. You know, so. Not it was because of those players, man. They they definitely made us take that L. We both chose the Patriots to take the dub on that game. Yeah, we we expected you know him to confuse Tua, and Tua actually didn't look too bad in the pocket. You know, he actually made some some pretty good throws. And um, st I think the Miami Dolphins still gonna have to figure out that run game a little bit more. But uh, they were able to figure it out enough to to inch on by this week or last week. Mm hmm. I agree. The next game we have, man, this here was this was disappointing. I have the Packer, pa Packers. I was gonna say Packers, Packers, <laughs> <laughs> Packers, and the Saints. Man, Saints blew them boys out, thirty-eight to three. Like Jameis, like you said, man, one, he, he the only threw for one forty-eight. The man had five touchdowns. Hey, he ate a dub. You trying to eat a dub? Oh, man. I'm trying to eat a dub. Hey, Jameis got something to prove this year, bro. Jameis got Lasix. Jameis has got QB1 under his belt. He ready to be strong. You strong? Because he's strong. Man, he Jameis made, headed for the win, bro. He made Aaron Rodgers look like <laughs> rookie. I, I don't know what he – I mean, it's interesting, though. You know, Rodgers missed most of camp, all the camp, you know, walks in, expects to be Rodgers. But, hey, it's the NFL. You know, everybody's been working. Everybody's been keying on you. And he thought he was Shakari Richardson. Nah, he man. thought he could stay and at not least, go to the Olympics. I mean, at least she had been working. At least she had been practicing. You know, practice. Do we know this for sure? 
Yeah, yeah, we don't. You right? We don't. We don't. I ain't seen no footage. Could have been on them edibles, chilling. (laughs) (laughs) We know she not smoking. She's a sprinter. Get off the boo boo. Boy, you funny. (laughs) Be smart. Be smart, folks. Be smart. Oh, and man. you know what? Jameis didn't only make the Packers look terrible. He made us look like fools oh, because did. we he thought did. the Packers was going to take the win man, on that one, bro. Aaron hey, Ryan was going to pull up and, hey, did not. That man look, Jameis man, made him look bad, boo-boo. Ain't nothing sweet about this new transition New Orleans is into. They want to get this team right, and they trying to go back to the ship. And I ain't mad at him, especially with Jameis at the helm. He's going to throw that football. It's crazy. I mean, right, he's going to throw the football, and that's the crazy part. Like, not that they don't have Drew Brees, but they don't ever have Michael Thomas. Like, arguably mm. their best receiver. Like, no, not even arguably. Their best receiver. I mean, of course you have mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara coming out the backfield. He's going to do what he does. You can split him out while he's going to do what he does, but – they don't even have Michael Thomas. Like, mm-hmm. slot, slot, slot maestro. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But, yeah, as long as James can make all the throws and, you know, hit everybody that they need to hit and get people that can get open or have people that can get open, they can blow a couple of more teams out 38-3 to three from the way it looked. The mm-hmm. next game you- we have – oh, did you want to say something else on that one? Oh, uh, no, nah, bro. I, James left me speechless. Ah, in fact, <laughs> hey, he did what he does. We have the Broncos versus the New York Giants. Broncos came out on top 27-13. Daniel Jones, 267 yards. Sterling Shepard, 113 yards. Not bad. What about that boy, Teddy Bridgewater? He got the shake. He got the moves. That boy, hey, they better leave that man alone. Really? You know, I, I was looking at this passing leader list, and it had Daniel Jones at 267. That's why it was listed. But, nah, Teddy B looked extremely good. Like, extre- I'm, I'm so – and I hope I hope Jerry Judy can come back with a speedy recovery. So I'm so mad. I'm so hurt that he got hurt. You know, I'm sad that he got hurt. Mm-hmm. That's one of Bridgewater's weapons. But uh, Bridgewater looked extremely good. Like, like we always do, he could look. He just needed a chance. You know, a, a team that can, you know, believe in him, give him a chance, an opportunity. And uh, I think that's what he got or what he has. Yeah, especially like I said, the the Broncos are ran by a quarterback, so they got to be quarterback driven. They have to just now buy into his skill set and be able to provide those weapons around him. I was betting on Jerry Judy to be something great for a yeah. lot of people this year for their teams, and unfortunately, he went down. And like you said, big ups, and hopefully he gets to be able to speed the recovery. And um, with or without that though happening. We took the dub anyway because both of us chose the Broncos to stomp the Giants. Saquon, what's up? Where you at? Ah, man, you know, and that's might be my thing, you know. It's tough to take people after those injuries, man. I think he's going to bounce back. It's just going to take a little time. Mm -hmm. I agree. The next game, well, last Sunday game I have on my list is the Bears versus the Rams. Rams came out on top, 34-14. Matthew Stafford, 321 yards. Matthew Stafford looked crazy. Who that man going to beat Matthew Stafford? Yo, he I've never seen him that happy in my life. Have you? Nah, this man was sprinting not. down the field, high-stepping. This man played for the Lions the last <laughs> Is his career? Of course not happy. <laughs> what do you mean? Have you seen the lines lately? <laughs> Where have you seen the lines at? Boy, only in Detroit. You know, nah. Of course he wasn't happy, but not that, that. But the crazy thing is, is he always did his thug thizzle in, in Detroit. It's just he didn't always have a defense to help him out, and he didn't always have other playmakers. I mean, so and now he has an opportunity. He has Roy Woods over there. He has Cooper Cup to get the ball. Higby looked extremely good. You know, like. No, them boys look. I think he gonna throw for three hundred probably every week. Mm, he never lied. They, he has an opportunity to, barring injury. A lot of this stuff we should start saying barring injury right, beforehand. Because right, 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 right. man, the NFL, which means not for long. My goodness, it's crazy. Because he, I mean, he threw for three twenty one on, and they they won thirty four to fourteen. Now, but you know, not to not to, I do want to call out, you know. Chicago Bears because I had the opportunity to draft David Montgomery and I'm kicking myself that I didn't. He only had 108 yards. That man there was running with some some fire, like mm-hmm. fast running over folks, juking folks, 
Like he, I want to say one play I saw him, he ran literally into the arms of the defensive tackle. This man is like 300 pounds, I know. Spins out of the tackle. Granted, he don't get far. He only fell ahead for like two yards. But to not even get plastered by this defensive tackle, to be able to spin out and, you know, gain anything is amazing. So um, I, I know David Montgomery is going to do some, barring injury, amazing things this year for sure. That's, mm-hmm. It was crazy. Yeah, man, and the Rams gave us the dub, bro. Shout out to the Rams. Love that team, man. Keep strolling. Go Rams. And the last game from week one was, uh, you know, that man Lamar Jackson Lamborghini and the Ravens versus uh, Darren Waller and the Las Vegas Raiders. And Las Vegas came out on top in that one, 33-27. to Did you believe the Ravens were going to win, bro? Did you really believe that Lamar was enough to beat them? I mean, I thought about who. All right, when you ask me that question, I think about the Raiders and who's on the other, who's on the offense of the Raiders, and mm-hmm. I draw a blank. You know, I mean, I don't literally draw a blank, but as far as there's nobody up to, I, I guess, in my opinion, Hollywood Brown and and Lamar's caliber. I think, and I granted the Ravens have gone through three running backs. I still figure. I mean, Tyson Williams didn't look bad. You know, mm-hmm. the guy didn't look bad. Um I don't know how like we were talking about beforehand, bro, Darren Waller had like twenty targets. If I'm if I'm the Ravens, I'm putting everybody on Darren Waller. Like while everybody. Like they they that's mm-hmm. the only person they were throwing it through. Darren Waller. Darren Waller. Darren Waller. Man, go go cover that man. And I think their ground mm-hmm. game I think the Raiders ground game kinda of picked up a little bit, but uh, it was Darren. It was the Darren Waller show. Car and Darren Waller cover oh, yeah. Darren Waller. Are you? Do you know what you're asking of them when you say that? That's like covering a receiver at tight end. It's Don't play damn man. near impossible. Don't it, play man, man is the only way. Man is the only way, and that's the tough part about covering that dude. Man's own. So, so, I guarantee you, somebody this year gonna figure it out, and Darren Waller gonna get held to. I ain't gonna say he's gonna get held to uh, ten targets. But he might get held to, I'm going to say, he probably had 20 targets, but he might get held to five or six receptions because somebody going to figure out. if Somebody mm-hmm. going to beat us, you know, it ain't going to be Darren Waller. And let it be Josh mm-hmm. Jacobs, let it be Hunter Renfro, let it be Henry Ruggs the third, let it be Derek Carr with his legs. You know, I don't care who it is, but it ain't going to be Darren mm-hmm. Waller. And uh, that ain't that ain't what the Ravens thought, and uh, they took that L. Man, well, the Ravens, hopefully the rest of their team gets gets healthy soon. But they gave you an L, and uh, the Raiders gave me the dub. Shout out to Raider Nation. Raiders. No, nah, they did. They mm-hmm. did. I have two. I actually looked up two things while we were while we were going through that one because I said two two things. So Chase actually mm-hmm. had five receptions on seven targets. I think I said he had three. He had five receptions. And Jalen Hurts oh, wow. did not win a Heisman. He actually came in second. My boy Joe Burrow actually won the Heisman that year. Oh, I wanted Jalen to win Burrow. that year, but uh, you know, that man Joe Burrow came through. And that's showing by his truth. He probably should have won that year. I'm not going to lie to you. Jalen right. had a hell of a year. Definitely put up numbers we had never seen at that organization. So, hey, shout out to Jalen either way it goes. Runner-up still win in this era, apparently. Right, right, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, that was a really good week one, man. I'm glad we got the opportunity to experience football coming back with all the excitement. So many funny memes. Funny mosque. Like, man, so many people got burnt this year, man. And like we talked about this past Thursday with Antonio Brown, a lot of the older guys are showing these rookies how to get down when it comes to covering them. Craziness, bro. It's crazy. Because, I mean, vets are vets for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. they've been in the league. They know the tricks. They know the trade. And, I mean – a lot of them, they they they're they're professional athletes. They're paid athletes. So I mean, mm-hmm. granted, Antonio might not be as fast as he was when he got in the league, but that man still pretty darn fast, and he might be quicker. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's crazy. Hands are probably better. Yeah. Hands are probably better for sure. You know so. Yeah. Well, man, now see, no, we set our eyes on week two. It's staring us right in the face. Thursday soon come. And we have some very, very interesting games ahead of us. How are you feeling about this Thursday night game? Uh, Thursday, we have the Giants versus the Washington football team. I think that'll be pretty good. I think that'll be an interesting game because I don't think the Washington football team has completely figured out their offense yet. 
And like you just said, you called out Saquon. And we know on the Giants side, that's pretty much your offense, unless they can get Galladay and Sterling Shepard more involved and Dan- really Daniel Jones throwing the ball. But um, I- I- I'm thinking – I think it's going to be a pretty good game. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, I'm running with I'm running with the football team though. Mm, man, I got to ride with them Giants this time, you man. Like Giants? I said, I called out Saquon. I'm trying to see some, man. I'm trying to turn this into some. So, turn this into some. But you gonna you gonna call them out and want to see something against Chase Young? Yes, Montana absolutely, Clinton? absolutely, absolutely. Now, right now, ooh, wee, you tough. You tough. I'm telling you right now, I need to see Saquon step up and show up and show out. Also, because I'm not playing him this week, so that's awesome. Uh, uh, okay, good let's call. Just see, let's just see call y'all have a good y'all, game. I hope y'all listening to that. I hope y'all listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> but he does still expect them to win, so hey. Yeah, absolutely. Just make sure that y'all understand that a lot of these picks, man, it, it's almost like no-brainers, if you will. Like, I have a no-brainer pick, man. Can I just go ahead and just say that – I truly believe that the Rams are going to stomp the Colts. That's just a no-brainer, in my opinion. What you thinking about it? Uh, After seeing Matt Stafford go off, I don't see the Colts standing a chance this week. No, nah, facts. I have I have the Rams uh, taking the Colts this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's basically what you said. Matt Stafford looked good. Not only did Matt Stafford look good, Aaron Donald still looks like Aaron Donald. And mm-hmm. Jalen Ramsey, dang Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. They they putting this man all over the field. They they've given this man free will. Like, yeah, Rams. He's manhandling That's what grown men That's out what I'm there. Saying. I'm confused. I'm I'm hella confused at his strength because it don't look like when you run up on him. But obviously, this man is in the weight room and he's eating his Wheaties. Oh man, he's a problem out there, man. man I have I have strong confidence away. that that defense can hold up against that Rams offense this week. It's gonna be a. Hey. It's going, it's going, it's I, like you said, it's a no brainer. I'm not even going to try and call out a score. I think it's a no brainer, though. Mm hmm. What's a no brainer for you? Uh, no brainer for me. I'm going to roll with, um, let me see as I look up. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, Minnesota and, uh, Arizona. No. Yeah. Can I take that back? Can I take that back? Obviously. I, I the next one under there is definitely my no brainer. Tampa Bay mm-hmm. versus Atlanta. Tampa Bay. Come on, dog. Uh, come on, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. That's a scary situation for for Atlanta, man. <laughs> scary. And, and it's at Tampa Bay? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> if, if Atlanta want to show up, they can. But, I mean, I, they might they might can stay home. They might can stay home. But I love Matty He's, Ice, so I mean I hope Matty Ice shows up or shows out. Not shows up, he shows up. But I hope he shows out. Peace go with them on that one. Thanks. It's not gonna be a pretty game for them, especially with the way the Buccaneers defense is looking hungry to prove themselves after a lackluster game they had. I'm not saying they didn't do amazing, but I mean Tom Brady, once he put his head down, you knew he had to go into God mode. Right. <laughs> so exactly. that means somebody wasn't doing their job. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Obviously. But, you know, they got the job done, and I believe they'll easily roll into the 2-0 and o slot for this upcoming week, too. I agree. It is definitely Tampa Bay. Do you have mm-hmm. a another – do you see another no-brainer? I'm looking at the list. I'm like, do you see another no-brainer on here? I do. I do see another no-brainer on here. And as despicable as this may sound, I do believe the Texans pull off a win against the Browns. Tyrod Taylor ain't having it. What y'all do to me all them years ago? What I am on a tear right now. I'm going to let y'all have it. Wait, so you say Tyrod over Baker. Tyrod is going to step into the Browns dog pound <laughs> and take a massive brown on them. Man, I'm serious. Tyrod's not having it, bro. You saw what they did to him all them years ago. I think he gonna leave. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He face, doesn't bro. respect. <laughs> <laughs> no, do they have Odell or not? Do we have Odell or not? Chubb, That's all I want to know. Chubb and they got Hunt. You know, you can start splitting Hunt. What I really want to see them do is split Hunt out to the to the side outside, and you can bring him out to the backfield. If you Who? Know, but you can. Who? Kareemy Reem, <laughs> split that man out. Let him run some routes. But I really want Chubb in the backfield. As long as they have Chubb. I, I, I'm going with I'm going with the Browns. I think they skid marking all over Tyrod Taylor, bro. Like, 
And Mark Ingram. Scoot, scoot. I'm Check this out, dog, fam. Bro. I'm. Ch- I was just about to bring up the big trust because uh, they clicking. Them boys hungry. They got something to prove. That first year head coach is showing a different type of culture and vibe to that new community that they have in that locker room. And I'm proud of them boys for actually showing up and showing out this this past week. But they have a big, big target with the Houston, the Houston Texans rolling into the Cleveland Browns hometown to get it done. And I do. The, I believe they will. I believe they'll get it done. We're going to see, man. We're going to see. Man. All right. Last no-brainer for me. Last no-brainer yeah, for what, me. What, what's your, is all it, right. Let me, let me see if this is really a no-brainer because that last one wasn't no no-brainer. But let, me see, let, let, me, let me see if this one's a no-brainer. Let, let, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> this one is obby. The Bills versus okay, the okay, Dolphins. Okay. That was the one I was about to call. I'm like, all right, nah, if you don't call this one, I don't know what you call them. But this one, all right, man, this is def- – you're going with the Dolphins, right? No. <laughs> the Bills is running it. Y'all know I ain't that wild. I don't be just trolling now. I'm still unbiased truth. Not the unbiased joke, y'all. <laughs> okay, I was just making sure. I was like, shoot. I, I mean, Tua look good, but I'm going to have yeah. to take Josh Allen over to a bit, dog. You're right, fam. You're right, man. Josh Allen still look good even in defeat. I don't doubt the Bills' ability to bounce back, especially with their receiving core looking so on point. They had a very good timing with Josh Allen going towards the end of the the end of the actual game. They did, man. I th- I think it's gonna go back to what I was saying, man. They running game. You know, Zach Moss was a healthy mm-hmm. scratch, or he was scratched. I don't remember if it was healthy or not, but he was a scratch. And then you had Devin Singletary, who I mean, he didn't play bad, but you know, I think they're gonna. I, they they have some I think they have some work to do in the running game and if they can figure that out I think once you can get a more balanced attack I think they'll be a hey, on fire but I think they'll have enough for Miami Dolphins for sure. Mm-hmm. I agree, man. But you know what? We talked about some games that are gonna be obvious, if you will, some no brainers. But what about some snooze bowls of the week? I'm talking about that one you know for a fact you ain't going to have to watch, turn your notifications on. If I ain't got a player on that team, you guarantee it ain't going to be on my screen. Mm. You're looking at any games right now that you know for a fact it's going to be a wrap. Because I see one with the Chiefs against the Ravens on Sunday that looks pretty much like a stomping in progress. You think that'll be a stomping in progress? Absolutely. The Ravens don't have the weapons nor the confidence to try to go and steal this win against the Chiefs. Now, the only thing they do have for their advantage is the fact that they're at home. I do believe going to Baltimore is going to be an interesting mix up for the Chiefs, but that ain't going to stop Patrick Mahomes from being Patrick Mahomes. And it sure as hell is not going to stop that defense from finding their identity, especially that, that now that they have the opportunity to go against a team that's weak in the Ravens right now. Nah, facts. I think um, I so to start off, I definitely choose Kansas City that for that game. I don't know that it'll be a snooze fest. I think Lamar. I always have faith in Lamar. I always want to see Lamar do great, you know. So I can never just be like it'll be a snooze fest. I want to see Lamar. You do count great. on I Lamar. Think, I'm counting on Mr. Peters being back there, and he's not. I, so I mean, um, I think, who gonna who gonna stop that connection back there? <laughs> it could just be a high scoring game, and Lamar now <laughs> figure something out on on the offensive side, you know. But, uh, yeah, the Ravens defense isn't as powerful as it typically is. And even if it was, Mm -hmm. it's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Having somebody back there that Patrick knows for a fact he doesn't respect, a lot lot of it has to do with respect when it comes down to that, that DB and quarterback connection. You know, on the other end. And if he don't respect you, I guarantee you the cheetah's going to find his way to be around you. Right, and right. the the burners will be turned on soon afterwards. <laughs> right, right. No, facts, facts, facts. <laughs> Man, one game I got my eye on is uh, – one game I have my eye on is the Pat- Patriots versus New York. Mm-hmm. I think that will be a pretty – not interesting game. I think it'll be low scoring. You know, you talk about smooth mm. fesses. I think this will be mm. a, a probably a low scoring game. Um, I don't, I don't have breakout players from for either. I have Corey Davis. We'll see what Corey Davis can do again this week. Um, but I, I'm riding with uh, the Patriots. I'm gonna ride with the Patriots on this one. Yeah, man, the odds of a rookie quarterback beating Bill Belichick are hella low. So I'm going to ride with the Patriots, too, on this one. I do believe that they might actually turn into a field goal fest. But 
I don't know anybody better than keeping a rookie quarterback on his heels than Bill Belichick, and I think they get the job done. I agree, man. That's that's where I'm kind of counting my money as well as on that Patriots defense. I know I put my money on them on last week, but again, I'm putting my money on them this week, and uh, yeah, I think I I don't know if Zach Wilson. We'll we'll see we'll see how Zach Wilson responds. If Zach Wilson does good this week, I might pick him up in fantasy. Hmm. I'm looking right now, man, and it looks like that the Bengals have an opportunity to steal away a win against the Bears. But if I'm being honest with myself, man, if they just stop playing with themselves, the Bears make a a complete decision by Sunday, I think they have an opportunity to actually start the guy they need to start. (laughs) At quarterback? And have a complete game. Yeah, man, the the toss-up at quarterback is, is not really good for team chemistry. You want to understand who you're going to ride with. Are we betting on the future on Dalton? Or are we going to go ahead and ride with that boy Fields? And I think Fields possibly the future. If it's the playbook that's the issue, then I would not start him right now. I would not start him at all. I would make sure he understands the playbook. But if you're concerned about whether or not he would get hurt, then y'all need to just get realistic and just get some better people on the line. I'm sorry. Y'all pay them boys for a reason. Nah, in fact, I I, I think um, it's interesting that you that you say that because we just talked about Zach Wilson, another rookie. You know, and maybe they don't have mm-hmm. anybody on the Jets roster that's better than him um, to kind of hold the team over until Zach can feel comfortable with the NFL game, the speed, and everything else. But there's nothing that's going to get him more prepared than being out there, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of a slippery slope when you start talking about, you know, is it better for him to be out there or is it, you know, should he sit out and just kind of watch, you know, as far as Justin Fields and, you know, I'm with you, you know. I'm, I kind of err on, on the side of you have you have a, a you have a, a good quarterback in, in Andy Dalton. Don't get me wrong, you know. But if you, if Justin Fields is the future, and you know, you uh, granted you want to learn a couple of things from the sideline. The man's gonna learn faster on the, on in the game, and then when it comes to the sideline, you can have somebody like Andy Dalton Dalton who's been in the game for several years. You know, a, definitely a vet. You know. Coach him up on the sideline, and you naggy as well. But you know those reps, those game time reps. There's nothing like game time. Reps. That's why I didn't know what Dak was gonna do. Dak hadn't seen preseason or anything. It's like uh, game time speed different from practice speed. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It'd be interesting. Ooh, I'm glad you brought up Dak because they got an issue coming up on Sunday. The Chargers. They headed out there to talk to the Chargers about getting the dub off of them. What you think about your boys rolling in there, man? Man, I'm riding with the uh, – come on, man, the Cowboys. Don't play with me like that. <laughs> I got to. After seeing what they did last week, I think the thing is is uh, it's going to be a high-scoring game. I really think this is a high-scoring game. So if you have any Dallas players on your team, you might want to play them. If you have any Chargers players on your team, you probably want to play them. Because I think – hey, I don't think either of the defenses are going to – do too too much to they kind of stop these offenses of attacks and both both attacks are going to be air raids you know from both sides so it, it, it has it has the potential to, to 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 jump up there so but I'm, I'm gonna ride with the cowboys i think cd lamb amari you know i think gallops out but cedric wilson did pretty good you know maybe we can get some screens to zeke we'll see i'm not doing this for any other reason than other to be unbiased but I think them Chargers about to pull a dub out at home. They have an opportunity to really show what they're made of. Herbert understands the assignment. I think he's going to pull through and get a dub for his team. I don't like the way their defense is looking right now, exactly. but they got plenty to hold over the Cowboys, especially if Michael Gallup's a little iffy. You know that's Dak's favorite target in, in, in crunch time. It is. And that, but just won't be, that just won't be an issue for them moving forward. So if all you got to worry about is C.D., because Amari is still trying to find his identity. He claims he's one of the best receivers in the league, but uh, where? Other than your paycheck, I ain't seeing it reflected just yet. So I think that Keenan Allen and them boys got more than enough for them for them boys over there on the other side in the Dallas defense to be able to pull a win out. It um, might be low scoring, but I think they get the dub. No, nah, I think it's going to be, if if not touchdowns, field goals at least. But I think, both, mm-hmm. to your point, I don't think the Chargers defense is, is gonna, enough. But again, Dallas defense still has to show it. So um, I, I think it's going to be a high scoring game. But uh, do you, you think know? Dak's going to throw it sixty times though? Feel me? Because that that was almost okay. What fifty eight times this past game? <laughs> if you got to throw it sixty, let them throw it sixty. You know, or I mean, if they get out ahead, you know, they're going to of course try and feed Zeke. And if 
if Zeke isn't why not feed Pollard? I was just about to say if Zeke isn't doing what he's supposed to do, I hope hopefully they sub they spill in uh uh Pollard, right, Tony Pollard and uh give him some touches, you know, because once they can get if they can get up, I mean start running the ball, but I just I just, like you said, it's Justin Herbert. Like Justin Herbert is a, to say a, a second year quarterback, Justin Herbert is a solid quarterback. I'm not saying that because he's mm-hmm. on my team, but he is a solid he, he looked good last week. You know what I'm saying? And Mike Williams. Mm-hmm. Bro, I had Mike Williams on my team probably when I first started fantasy and probably every year since then and the man has not performed at all maybe last year a little bit towards the end the man has been trash yeah this same man, bro Williams same doing what he was supposed to be doing like what I had been expecting him to do this whole time like Mike Williams looked extremely good him Ken Allen on the other side I think they have Jared Cook at a uh, at tight end now ah oh, man that's a lot of weapons for Justin Justin Herb and then Austin Eckler out the backfield it's a lot of weapons man yeah trill spill so it'll be interesting to see high scoring I think Mm-hmm. I agree. But then we have I see on here we have the Titans versus the Seahawks. Mm. What a game, what a game, what a game, what a mighty good game. I have to ride with Seattle, man. And rest we trust, man. I'm gonna have to stick to Absolutely. Just like your partner used to say, in Russ, we trust. Hey, he probably man. still say that. Yeah, he probably, <laughs> he still, probably still say I don't that. Know. I'm going to have to look at his roster because I'm in a league with him this year. I'm going to have to look at his roster and see if he got him this year. But uh, <laughs> that might be in Russ, we trust. I'm going to definitely have to write, especially after what Tennessee just pulled this past week. Uh, hey, shit. Russ got to pull a dub just for his lady rocking his jersey as a dress. Come on now. She took it back to 20, uh, 2010. Right. Well, remember crazy. that? Them jersey dresses? Man. She. You just get out of here, right girl. <laughs> indeed, indeed, girl. Yeah, yeah. I think Russ and them pull it out, man. I like what Russ is doing with Tyler Lockett. I also love the fact that so people are so concerned about DK Metcalf's ability to split those backers in half and just get those yards after the catch. That's their main concern. It ain't about him catching the ball. It's once he turns another gear and gets to running. You you can stop him once he gets the ball, but once that man gets the running, ain't nobody trying to hit that man. Not in open field. <laughs> nah, you ain't even trying to hit him while he's catching it, you know, let alone when he even got picked up some steam. Nah, man. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a lot of man yeah. coming your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and why fast. I think that uh I think that when you look at Tennessee's offense right now they're still trying to figure out where to input julio which is uh, ironic to say right you would think that you could take a player like julio and just plug and play just like you would do in madden right. but it seems like either this is a playbook issue or overall inability for other receivers on the field to understand the star power that comes into playing with the julio jones you need to make room all right if you don't understand what it means to get the hell out of the way and let Julio run his route, then you need to figure it out soon. You need to go back and watch some game tape and know who that man is. Because when Julio Jones on the field, he takes priority. All right. If you got to go be a blocker for 10 plays in a row, well, guess what you're doing, buddy? You're going to turn into a center. All right. I don't care what you got to say. Protect the ball. <laughs> it's on Tannehill, too. Tannehill got to pepper your boy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I don't think it'll be enough for them to get the chemistry against a team that's very ready to take a dub, especially when they're running into the 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 ultimate, the ultimate weapon whenever you're running to a hometown, the twelfth man out there in Seattle. I don't think they can be I don't think they can do it. Nah, 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 nah. Not against not against no, no. Just no. I agree. Mm-hmm. No. You know, we we didn't talk about it, but you know, Sunshine has a game coming up against the Broncos. And right. the Broncos, right. the Broncos look good. They do. I right. think they actually can pull a win against the Jaguars. They actually have an offense this year, which is crazy. Yeah. Because, you know, last time I thought about the Broncos having an offense, I think they, I mean, they had Peyton Man and they were okay that year. They had a pretty good offense that year. Peyton Man couldn't even throw deep, so I ain't even going to say that they had a, you know what I'm saying? Like Ooh. Peyton was. He was paid. He was accurate, but mm-hmm. he, he even, so that was limited. Last was time it? I heard about yeah. him having an offense was Terrell Davis. You know, mm. I think the Broncos actually have a, a decent offense this year. I mean, Melvin Gordon, he looked pretty good. You know, you got Teddy B at the helm, and you got some pretty, you got some pretty decent receivers. You got some pretty good receivers. You know, a pretty good receiving core. I'm, I'm, I'm also riding with uh with Denver, man. I, 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 I have Sunshine on my team. I love them. I, I just don't think they. What, what messed me up last game with them was. James Robinson was 
or RB2 last year, if not RB1. James James Robinson was probably the top waiver pickup of the year if you had James Robinson. James Robinson still didn't look bad, but they didn't give mm-hmm. him hardly any touches. You know, so I, I, granted, they're trying to get Sunshine acclimated, but it would definitely help if they can get that running game going. But against the Denver Broncos, it doesn't matter. It's not going to get going this True. way. So mm-hmm. I'm riding with the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. I'm riding with the Broncos, man. Now, I think that um, a game I'm interested in seeing is uh, old famous Jameis versus C Mac. Yeah, who you think gonna put up the most fantasy points this week? Fantasy points. That's a good. That's a good question. Uh, they gonna have to figure that out in the next episode that we drop this upcoming week. If y'all are worried about what we're doing and why these guys aren't giving y'all any information on who to start and who to sit, well, guess what? We're breaking it on down for y'all in the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned in. We're just locking in these picks. For this upcoming week. So if you want to know, should I start Jameis? Who do I think is going to be doing what? Make sure you tune into our upcoming episode. Because we'll still be on the block. Kicking it. And giving you our fantasy sports takes. Most definitely. Most definitely. We just want to make sure that, you know, we're aware of everybody that's going to be healthy. Not able to play. For whatever reason. COVID. You know. Whatever the reason is. So give us a little more time. Yeah. Though, you know. Get our fantasy roster straight, but right now these picks are going. I'm talking about famous Jameis, wrong with famous Jameis mm-hmm. over um, Christian McCaffrey and the Carolina Panthers, who I think will have the higher points. I'm probably rolling with uh, McCaffrey, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm probably ride with McCaffrey just because in my my league running uh, rushing touchdowns way more than than passing, and um, I think I mean. So are the yards as well. The rushing yards are more than the passing yards. And, you know, McCaffrey's going to not only get in on the rushing side of things, but receiving side of things as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm, going to probably ride with McCaffrey and fantasy points. But as far as who's going to win this game, famous Jameis. I agree, man. I'm looking at it right now, and I think that Jameis and them are going to pull out the dub too, especially rolling into the Panthers' home stadium with that CGI Panther. I think they still going to pull off a dub against it. Not most definitely. Man, I see one game we haven't talked about yet. I've been staying away from it, but I still got to ride with them boys going 2-0 and heading into – the third week of the NFL season. My Steelers are going up against them Raiders. And them Raiders pulled off a shocker. Man, everybody was on the edge of their seat when they saw the Ravens lose twice in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but I think the Steelers, they if they can turn it on, I hope they're not a second-half team this year. That's kind of our thing last year. It was very exciting football to watch. But, hell, I hate drama. I really don't like drama. I like to know that my team's good. I like to be coasting, relaxing, and not being stressed about the entire game. And against the Bills, the Steelers came out looking lethargic, looking like they didn't really understand their mechanics. Now the Steelers have an opportunity to play against the Raiders, an AFC matchup that is very, 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 very spicy because Derek Carr is, is, is looking like a very happy quarterback now. He's got the weapons. Like you said, Waller's still out there balling. He's got the weapons. He's got the the morale. I think Derek Carr's ready to make a statement this year. I agree. I like but not it. against my Steelers. No, 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 no. <laughs> Definitely not against the Steelers. I think the Steelers and uh, that that steel curtain is gonna. That's that's my pick. Rolling with the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like Derek Carr. I like the Raiders. You know, they kind of like I said I, when I was in Oakland. They kind of they 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 rubbed off on me a little bit. I do like Derek Carr, but he gonna have to pass that ball around. Share the ball a little bit more, man. Spread it out. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, they could try it this week and maybe it's successful. But I'm still, I'm still right with the, the Steelers this week, man. I just think uh, the interesting thing for me was, you know, like you said, y'all were a second half team last year. It kind of looked like that this year, but you know, when it count, when it when, when it was necessary, y'all y'all didn't have much of a running game. But Big Ben was still able to, you know, be Big Ben. And I, I think against the uh, the Raiders, if necessary, Big Ben can still be Big Ben. So. Couldn't have said it better myself, my brother. Sound like you about to pull that Steeler jersey out of the closet, man. Whoa, I'm proud of you, man. Let's not go I'm that proud far. of you. Let's not go, whoa, whoa, wait. I got an aunt that's a Steeler fan. That's about as close as it gets. No. 
I'm like, all right, Insane. We we shouted you out. We we gave you the Steelers pick this week. That's all you got. Yeah, man. Did we miss any games? I don't know, man. I don't even see anything else I care about on the schedule. Do, do you see anything we missed? I see, I see, <laughs> I see uh this will actually might be straight. I see 49ers and Philly. Oh yeah, okay. I, it just hurt me to bring it up because Hurts would have hurting on them dirty birds last week, hey, man. man. He did. He definitely did. You think he'll be able to do the same against the Forty Niners, though? If they start Trey Lance, now nah, I'm gonna stop plugging that rookie. Nah, <laughs> I'm gonna stop plugging that young man. Nah, I think they have an opportunity to pull out a win against the Forty Niners. Absolutely. I like the 49ers opportunity to be great in the defensive field. But when it comes down to the Eagles, I think with that offense that they're trying to run, Hurts fits in perfectly. And as long as that, as long as he stays true to what he's doing and doesn't pull a Carson Wentz, and y'all know what I mean by that, Philly. I ain't, do I have to go any further? Do I have to go any further? All right, that's all I got to say. As long as he don't pull one of them Wentz, uh, I think they'll be just fine. And they can at least pull a win out in week two against the 49ers. Nah, that's what I'm rocking with as well. That's how I feel. I'm, I'm rocking with the the Eagles over mm-hmm. the 49ers. I think, I think you know, with the 49ers offense, they can kind of plug and play a a running back. So, I mean, depend. I think their their offense is almost as good as their running back is until they decide they want to start peppering some stuff to Kittle and Debo and Ayuk. But you know, I think their their bread and butter is their their running backs, and ah. I don't know. I, I think I think if if they have to, you know, start airing it out. I mean, Garoppolo looked okay. This boy well, looked good this past week, but um, against these Eagles, I, I would have to take my boy Jalen Hurts, you know, and uh, Devontae Smith. They looked real good. That connection looked real good. And Miles Sanders, you know, he he was holding it down on the ground game. So, so I'm definitely got to route the Eagles. Yeah, man, definitely, bro. They're going to fly high this week. So shout out to my cousin. I know you loving hearing me say that right now, but you won't get too many of those At because all. the Steelers are still the best team in Pennsylvania. I don't want to hear it. That's crazy. I forgot they both was in Pennsylvania. I yeah, never really yeah it's easy to forget when you got such a dominant team on the other side of the state doing what they do. <laughs> Yeah, the Philly <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> okay, okay. Just because they're current doesn't mean that they're great. That's all I'm going to say on that. Man, is there any other NFC team that I may have missed that's having a game? I don't really care to watch any more snooze fest. The NFL has got to put together more things. Maybe they need better halftime shows. Ooh. For Sunday? Yeah. Man. The only other Sunday game I see that we have is the Minnesota Vikings against the Arizona Cardinals. And Kyler Murray looked extremely good and will always look probably extremely good in this Cliff Kingsbury uh, offense. So I'm running it. Oh, man. I talked about Kyler Murray, but let's talk about Chandler Jones. <laughs> yeah, hold on just a moment. <laughs> it's gonna make Kirk Cousins. Well, Kirk Cousins doesn't. Well, he's been he had to drop back quite a bit last week, but you know, yeah, I, I'm riding. I'm riding with them. I'm gonna have to ride with the uh, the Cardinals, man. I'm gonna have to ride with the Cardinals on that one. Man, yeah, I'm riding with the Cardinals on this one too. They have a big, big opportunity to be able to pull out the upset against the Vikings. They'll be at home, so I don't think the Vikings are going to come in with any type of momentum, should I say. But I do think that the Cardinals have the opportunity to throw that ball up to D-Hop, and he is going to embarrass somebody on the other end of that, that ball. So just give him an opportunity to, to, to jump up. We're going to see some amazing highlights this upcoming Sunday. Man, what? I was... I was so happy I wasn't going against Hopkins this week. I think in the first half he had like two touchdowns. I was like, "What? Like, what?" Mm. And I had, I think I had the opportunity. No, and I think I had the opportunity to draft him, and I went Devontae Adams. But after this first week one, I was so hurt, so so hurt. Man, yeah, I was about to say. So, how did your week one go overall, bro? To wrap up this episode, bro. My my week one was shaky. I tried my best to get get happy about things. I still won. The game, but I, you know how it is when you when you did not start certain people that were top earners and you just sitting and rack up points on the bench. Yeah. It's embarrassing, man. I like I like winning, but I like to crush the competition totally. 
Who did you have so sitting on your it, bench? <laughs> Bruh, I had I had Tyreek Hill sitting on the bench in one of my leagues. Just sitting there. Who would you fire? Just up sitting over there. Tyreek Hill. I bruh, bruh, I don't even want to talk about it. I really I'm don't. like, wait, who 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 did you fire about it? up over Tyreek? I don't, wanna, like, I don't even wait. want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to say like, nothing. <laughs> no, I put Kenny Galladay thinking that I was smarter than a fifth grader, and I wasn't. I wasn't. And even Tyreek Hill, I didn't realize he wasn't up there. I didn't go to that one. You know how it is when you got multiple leagues, bro. Right. I start, I forgot. I forgot which one he was in and which one he was and wasn't starting in. And I fumbled the bag. I did start him in my other three. But, uh, yeah, I dropped the bag on that one big time. I don't I don't think Galladay. Galladay, just I think for week one, it was probably a bad idea. But Galladay, yeah. as he builds more chemistry with Daniel Jones, I think Galladay will be a uh, a very viable fantasy asset moving forward. Mm-hmm. Well, after that can happen, if that can happen. It is Daniel yeah. Jones we're talking about here. But, uh, you know, yeah. Galladay can go make some plays. He made a pretty nice snag uh, this for, in week one. So I, I think he, he definitely has um, some promise. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, not week one. How you, how you feeling about your team overall though? How'd you do? Did you uh, win? I won. I won. I won in one league. I lost in another league. Um, the one league I lost, or I lost in. It was, uh, yeah, it was bad. That was the one I went against Debo Samuel in. Um, I got, I got, I got blasted pretty good. I'm trying to think why did I get blasted so bad in this league? I'm trying to think who on my team didn't perform, and I had, mm-hmm. I had both of my running backs. They didn't I have Jonathan Taylor and Najee Harris? Najee got me like five. Tunyon, Tunyon didn't do anything. Get tight end, he got me like one. I had at the flex Michael Pittman Jr. He got like four. So yeah, it was yeah, it was it was a rough week, man. It was a rough week. Jalen Waddle was on my bench for fourteen. I probably I still wasn't the one that I had him in. I went against Stafford. Stafford had like thirty. Stafford looked real good, man. And Debo, Debo, damn you, Debo. Yeah, Debo, Debo, a lot of people's lineups this week. And be on the lookout for that. And also be on the lookout for this upcoming episode. Everything we just talked about this past couple minutes will be a little bit more expanded on our upcoming episode on all of our streaming platforms. We we'll appreciate the real ones for tapping in to another episode of On My Block. Me and Sino are giving it to y'all this NFL season. Sino, they loving us, man. They loving the crew. They always loving gonna the love. Crew. I'm glad they love us because I love them. <laughs> I love talking about it. It's something I, I actually get excited about talking about. Even though my voice, you can hear the inflection in, in my voice when I get excited. But football is something I enjoy talking about. NFL is something I enjoy talking about. You know, so. I'm glad y'all tuning in and y'all enjoying us as I enjoy y'all. Absolutely. Likewise, you know. Well, hey, I'm Cameron A. Sharp. And I'm Cena. And this was another episode of On the Block. That's right. Peace, y'all.